Hello everyone and welcome to QuantPy. So we are going to move to the interest rate term structure models now and I'm going to start by introducing the term structure and explaining a few important concepts related to the term structure such as the instantaneous forward rates, short rates, bank accounts and zero coupon bonds and more importantly how they are linked together. I'm going to start with the visuals which means charts and tables really and then move to the mathematics but if you would prefer to start with the mathematics, then please fast forward to 710 to meet your friends. So what is this term structure of interest rates then? Luckily, we don't have a definition to memorize. Let's just say it's a more formal mathematical name for more or less the same thing as the yield curve. You would have seen it many, many times before, but I'm going to get an example from the Bank of England website just to fix ideas. They published three sets. But we just need one example, so I'm going to get the one that's based on the commercial bank's liabilities. So this curve would have been constructed from instruments that uh, reference the LIBOR, such as the forward rate agreements and swaps, etc. What we are saying here is that a given time small t, interest rate is a function of maturity, which is the capital T. So if you want to borrow for one year, you pay 1%. And if you want to borrow for 10 years, you pay 1.4% per annum. As the date moves, the curve shifts, meaning it is stochastic and needs to be modeled. And this is precisely what the interest rate term structure modeling guys do, apart from watching the Game of Thrones. You can also represent the term structure using discount factors, which you can easily calculate from the spot interest rate that we just saw. These are also called the prices of zero coupons because they essentially represent the present values of one quid in the future. So what we are saying here is 1 quid in 5 years time is worth uh, 94 pence whereas 1 quid in 10 years time is worth 87 pence. Again, as the date moves, the curve shifts, keeping the modelers busy. You can also represent the term structure using forward rates. We are showing this last but this is one of the most important representation of the term structure as far as the modeling is concerned. If these were to be the 6 months forward rates, then this point represents the interest rate that you can agree today to borrow money in 10 years time and repay it 6 months later. So you're agreeing the interest rate at small t, you're getting the money at capital T and you're returning it at capital T plus delta. Where delta could be 12 months, 6 months or 1 month. And the limit as it shrinks to zero, this becomes the instantaneous forward rate. And the instantaneous forward rates are what we have plotted here. So for the instantaneous forward rate, you're agreeing the interest rate at small t, you're getting the money at capital T and you're returning it an instant later. So you don't really need the third parameter. Again, as the date moves, the curve shifts. As the term structure models require good understanding of the structure and dynamics of the instantaneous forward rate, let's zoom in on a small subset of this data to analyze it in more detail. So we have the data now in a nice and simple tabular format where something is not right. The first dimension is measuring time using calendar dates. The second dimension is also measuring the length of time but using real numbers. As the real numbers are easy to work with, let's transform the first dimension into real numbers as well, which is quite easy to do. So what you have to do is to set one of the dates, say the first date equal to zero, and then measure each other date as a distance from this date in years. So for the second entry then, we will count the number of days between this date and the base date and divide it by 365, which is the number of days in a year. If you don't want to be pedantic, then the numerator is one month and the denominator is 12 months, so you get 0 0.083. So the next entry is then a further month away, so I will just add 0 0.083 to the value we just computed and so on. We can get rid of the dates now. Right, so the second inconsistency we got now is that the rows are starting at 0 but the columns are starting at 0 0.083 which I'll fix by just pretending that the columns start at 0 as well. So we got a subtle issue now, the rows are in relation to the, to the base date but the columns are then in relation to the rows which again is quite easy to fix. So what you have to do is to keep the first row as it is, shift the second row one place to the right, the third row 
two places and so on. And we can fill in the details on the right hand side from the original source. So each entry now represents the forward rate at small t for instantaneous borrowing at capital T. So the small t runs along the rows and the capital T along the columns. If you were to fix a maturity time, say 3 months, which is 0 0.25 in years, then the forward rate of the reference time will be a function of time as time goes from 0 to 0 0.25. As the maturity time is fixed, the remaining maturity will shrink as time progresses and of course this forward rate will become meaningless after the small t becomes larger than the capital T, which is 0 0.25 because it will then mean the interest rate for borrowing in the past, which doesn't make sense until time travel becomes a reality, of course. Alright, so just to check the understanding now. So what elements do you think represent the short rates? Remember, the short rate at a given time means the interest rate for instantaneous borrowing at that particular moment. So it will be the entries along the diagonal. While it's easy to appreciate the reasons for including the charts, the reasons for including and formatting the tables might not be so obvious, so let me explain. When we discuss the HJM framework in the next video, you will see it models the dynamics of a fixed maturity forward, so you can visualize it as a modeling the dynamics of a column. We have shown them here with a monthly frequency, but there's a continuum of them. That's why you will hear that the HJM framework is a, an infinite dimensional framework, though it's a lot simpler than it sounds, as we shall see in the next video. The short rate models, as you would expect, models the dynamics of the diagonal entries, and they will then have the term structure equations, which will take this as an input, in addition to other parameters, to give you the whole term structure. Right, so I think we understand the geometry of the term structure now and we can move to the mathematics now. So I'll start with the simplest of the simplest, which is the zero coupon, which we know pays one quid at maturity, so its price at maturity must be equal to one. Before then it's just the discounted value of this one quid, where I discounted using the spot interest rate. You can also discount using the forward rate and to see that let's take the interval from small t, which is today, and the capital T, which is the maturity of the zero coupon, and divide it into n sub-intervals, where t naught equals small t and tn equals capital T. Let's represent the forward rate of the first interval by f and the three arguments, which means that the, this is the forward rate at small t for borrowing between t naught and t1. Similarly, we can write the forward rate for the interval between t1 and t2, and so on. Actually, the names are a lot longer than I expected, so I'm going to drop the third parameter. We use the same name for the instantaneous forward rate, but the equation shall make it abundantly clear which one is meant. So if you see summation, then it means that the simple forward is meant, and if you see integral, then it means the instantaneous forward rate is meant. Right, so now we know that the price of the zero coupon at maturity is equal to 1. If we discount it for the last period using the relevant forward rate, we get its value at tn minus 1. And if we discount it for a further period, then we get its value at tn minus 2. And we can continue all the way to small t. We know how to combine the exponentials, we just add the terms in the exponents. And the most tricky part is probably getting the summation index right. Now if we let the number of intervals becomes very large, so that the size of each interval becomes very tiny, so the summation becomes integral, and the simple forward will become the instantaneous forward rate. And now we have the value of the zero coupon in terms of the instantaneous forward rate. If you compare the two expression, you will see the you will see that the terms and the exponents must be equal. And if we separate y on the left hand side, you can see that the spot interest rate is an average of the instantaneous forward rate. Remember, integral means area, and area divided by the length of the interval means height. 
Another important concept that we're going to discuss now is the bank account, which is more or less the opposite of the zero coupon, because in the zero coupon we have one quid at maturity, which is in the future, and we are interested in its present value. In the case of a bank account, we start with one quid at time zero. It's been growing since then, and we are interested in its present value. To understand the bank account, let's say we started with one quid at time zero. We invested it for a small interval of length delta u1 at an interest rate equal to r1. We then reinvested the proceed for another interval and so on, let's say for n intervals in total. We can combine the exponentials. And now if we assume that the n intervals span the time from 0 to t, and we let the number of intervals becomes very large, then the summation becomes the integral. And now we have the value of the bank account in terms of the short rate. So we have the price of the zero coupon in terms of the spot interest rate and the forward rates, and the value of the bank account in terms of the short rate. We can't express the value of this bank account in terms of the spot interest rate or the forward rate because these quantities are defined on a forward basis. So we can't go back in time and regrow the bank account because time travel is not a reality yet. But we can express the value of the zero coupon in terms of the short rates. Now the zero coupon pays one quid in the future, so this will involve the future values of the short rates, which is stochastic, so we will need to bring in probability and expectation. And the best way to approach this is to use the risk neutral valuation formula, which says that the value of any asset Scale by the value of the bank account is a martingale under the risk neutral measure. For our purposes here, what it means is if we take the price of the zero coupon at maturity and scale it by the value of the bank account at capital T, then the expected value of this quantity is equal to its current value. We can shift the B in the denominator to the right hand side, and because it's known by time small t, we can take it inside the expectation and we know how much the bank account grows by between small t and capital T but this has been inverted so we will change the sign of the exponent to minus and now we have it the value of the zero coupon in terms of the short rate. Another important relationship that you will frequently encounter is the one that expresses the instantaneous forward rate in terms of the zero coupon so we want to invert this relationship to get f in terms of p. So the first thing you will need to do is to get rid of the exponential. So we take logarithm of both sides. And now to get rid of the integral, we take derivative with respect to the capital T. And if you apply the Leibniz integral rule, so more or less the integral and the derivative cancel each other, and we are left with the instantaneous forward rate as the function of the zero coupon. You can also derive this relationship as the limit of the simple forward. To see that, let's say that we have been given the discount factor for capital T. If we discount it for a further period of length delta at the relevant forward rate, we get the discount factor for capital T plus delta. We can shift the exponential to the left hand side. And now if we take the logarithm of both sides, and then shift the delta to the right hand side. So now we have the simple forward rate in terms of the zero coupon, but we are interested in the instantaneous forward rate. So we take the limit as delta goes to zero. Now the left hand side is the instantaneous forward rate, and the right hand side is how the calculus guys will write the derivative of a function. So the function now is log of p and the derivative is with respect to the second parameter, which is the capital T. So we got the same relationship as before, as you would expect. Right, so the last relationship that I'm going to examine is the one between the differential of the short rate and the differential of the instantaneous forward rate. We saw earlier that the short rate at a given time means the interest rate for instantaneous borrowing at that particular moment. So it would be the instantaneous forward rate as the capital T goes to the small t. So these would be the diagonal entries. 
how about the differential of the short rate is it equal to the differential of the instantaneous forward rate evaluated at small t to see the significance of this let's say we want to move from one observation of the short rate to the next so you will just take one step along the diagonal so if you want to travel the same distance using the instantaneous forward rates it means you will need to go one step down and then one step to the right so both parameters are changing so it means you will need to add the differential with respect to the second parameter evaluated at small t this relationship is uh, important when you try to establish the relationship between the models that are based on the forward rates such as the HJM framework and the models that are based on the short rates such as the Wozniak and Hull White if you have the dynamics of the forward rates then you can derive the dynamics of the short rates i hope you enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you in the next when we discuss the famous HJM